34 years of marriage, what is the secret? What is the secret? <laughs> um, but what is it? What has kept y'all so strong and happy all these years? She's a remarkable woman. You just listen to each other, you're there for each other, you, you, you know, it's really just staying fluid with whatever's going on in your life and moving. You are at the right place at the right time. Because just a few days ago, the wife of infamous celebrity Michelle Fox spilled some beans about their magical love story, despite the fact that they have been together for almost 35 long years. We always see her acting as a right hand for Michael Fox in every condition. Her shocking revelation about their iconic relationship. When we kind of reconnected and um, it's great. You know, I love working with Michael and um, we're very simpatico. Has shook the entire world as they are considered to be the best couple in town when everyone around them changes their partners like clothes. Let's get closer. Here we begin the story. Before you know the truth behind the surprising statement of Michael J. Fox's wife, you get to know the hidden corners of his life. This charming persona jumps into this world on the 6th of June, 1961, as a brother to four of his siblings. His father was a military officer, and they were supposed to move from one place to another because of his job requirements, continue shifting and changing environmental effects. Michael and his brain react to it differently. How? Soon you will realize. Young Michael faces new challenges every time his father, William Fox, transfers to another city in Canada. But on the other hand, this gave Michael a totally new world to explore every time. Before it gets worse and could destroy the personality of young Michael, his father retires in 1971, and the little brat, who was always considered to be the future military man, suddenly takes a decision in his life. He decided to chase his dream. He dreamt to become a rock star and get fame in the music industry, so he grabbed a guitar on a Christmas night and started playing with it. I love guitars. Gibson and Fender. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it was also, like, I think if I looked at that now, I might say, a little twee, like, easy on the jumping, the trampolines with the guitar. He was just eight years old when he himself tried hard to learn about music. He often joined some smaller bands for their performances, but this was not his destiny. Something bigger was chasing him. When he joined secondary school, his interest started to swipe towards something new. He didn't want to be a person who all day long worked for some other company to make them millionaires. His creative nature was urging him to do something extraordinary, and one day, he got to know about drama classes in his school. He became surprised to know that acting role plays was not just a time pass for him. He had inner feelings for acting. It was just the beginning. As soon as he realized his real ambition, he didn't stop. And at the young age of 15, he entered the world of stardom with his first debut Canadian television series, Leo. And me. Leo and me. I added it up on the way home, Leo. I've been in seven jams. A little shorter and the hair a little longer, but even then he was getting roles because he looked younger than his age. Here is a point. Michael was young, and it was his first experience to face the limelight of the media industry. But he was confident enough to do the role. He proved himself an alpha male who didn't stop. He successfully does the character and decides to take the acting career professionally. This takes courage, and he decided to leave the limited Canadian platform for a huge, never-ending sky of opportunities in Hollywood. He stepped into Los Angeles in 1979, when he was just 18. But that wasn't a piece of cake. He struggled a lot to get a chance in Hollywood. He spent most of his time regretting his decision to come to Los Angeles but he stayed committed to his passion, and soon it paid off. During his countless auditions, producer Ronaldo Sheldon met with him. He liked his acting skills, 
It seemed like now he was going to debut in Hollywood, like a storm, and Ronald confirmed his name for an American film letter from Frank. But once again, another challenge rose up. He was not able to do the film with his name, Michael Fox, because there was another Michael Fox in Hollywood who was an experienced and known actor. And according to the laws of the Actors Guild in Hollywood, no two actors can be registered with the same name. Now Michael has to take another bold decision. He slightly changed his name and induced a J in the middle of his name. He laughs at this name. There was a, there was a Michael Fox in the union when I, when I moved down. So they said, you have to be something else. So, you know, I didn't like, you know, Bob Fox. So I, uh, so I, I made up the J because there was an actor named Michael J. Polly that I liked. So mm. I said, Michael J, that sounds good. And when people ask about why he uses the letter J specifically, he gives the epic response that he assumed himself to be a genuine. Michael started his career in Hollywood. He did multiple films and television shows like Midnight Madness and Class of 1984, but he didn't get any fame. He was waiting for his big break. Some people started considering him a bad choice for their movies, but at that weak point, he got a role that changed his life forever. The iconic character of Alex P. Keaton in the NBC sitcom film Family Ties. He played this role of a conservative teen against his liberal parents in such a great way that the show became the premium show of American television in 1982, not only for a year, but continuously stealing the screen for many years and reaching for seven seasons. Michael did that role so perfectly that he got three Primetime Emmy Awards for this comedy series. This is Michael J. Fox's fourth consecutive nomination. The first Emmy win for his work on Spin City. He has won three previous Emmys for his work on Family Time. He received worldwide recognition for his name and skills. He got fame that everyone dreams of. Now, Michael was all set to lead the films too. And in 1985, he got the iconic role of Marty in Back to the Future. And his energetic persona made this fantasy film based on time travel a super hit. His relatable punchlines and outstanding chemistry with Christopher Lloyd created unforgettable moments. He made this film a beloved classic for all ages. The movie earned $380 million worldwide and it was a huge success. So the super hit movie continues to its sequel, Back to the Future Part 2 and Back to the Future Part 3. All the movies were big hits for Michael, and he proved himself as a versatile actor. Now, Michael J. Fox was getting fame for his comedic roles, but he decided to get out of his comfort zone and do something challenging. So he did the role of Jamie Conway in Bright Lights, Big City, which was a role of a person fighting with self-demons in the limelight of New York. With this role, he once again proved his versatility, and then he didn't look back. He gave one after another hits, like he did intense war films, political scripts, and intense stories very well. With all this, he continued to win hearts with his humorous acting skills in movies like Doc Hollywood. After achieving remarkable success in films, he rejoins the TV screen for one more time. This time, he gave another hit sitcom, Spin City, based on a character named Mike Flaherty. The show cleverly combined political satire with humor, showcasing Fox's talent for delivering sharp, comedic lines. His charismatic performance and relatable character helped revitalize his career after the success of Family Ties and the Back to the Future films. With its ensemble cast, and engaging storylines, Spin City quickly gained a dedicated following. Fox's portrayal of Flaherty earned him critical acclaim, including several Emmy nominations. The Emmy goes to, oh wow, this is even more nerve wracking than anything else, okay. Michael J. Fox, Spin City. Ultimately, 
the series solidified his status as a television icon and showcased his enduring appeal in the world of comedy. If we talk about his award shelf, his character Alex in Family Ties Alone won three Emmy Awards. Fox also got the Golden Globe Award for his outstanding performance in Spin City, along with multiple nominations. His charming personality always attracts his fans to watch his shows, giving him a burst of fame throughout his career. This was the story of Michael's workplace, but something strange has happened inside his private life, his shocking love story, which is now raising questions among his fans, the love story that occupied the hearts of millions for decades. Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan were co-stars at the sets of Family Ties, where the chemistry and bonding between these two mesmerized the whole world. Michael chose Tracy himself for her brilliant role of Alex Love in season four. Well, she was she was hired to play um, Alex's girlfriend, uh, and she was a really interesting girl, woman. She was um. Michael admitted once that when he looked at Tracy during auditions, he decided to give the role to her. She had the courage to do the iconic role. Tracy inspired Michael, and this was the beginning of their future relationship. Although both stars were engaged with other partners at that time, both were dating other people. But despite sharing some friendly moments together on the sets of family ties, they didn't have any other feelings for each other. They were smoothly heading towards their future, where a surprise union was waiting for them. Tracy was not like other young girls. She was quiet and thoughtful. She often sits on her chair for long times, thinking and observing others. Michael found it amazing that a girl could be so quiet. He was curious to know about her thoughts, but things remained the same at that time. Soon, in 1987, Tracy and Michael reunite at the sets of Bright Light Big City, which was a hit given by Michael and was based on Jay McInerney's novel. They both were now more mature and more experienced in their relationships. Both were separated from their previous affairs. This time when they met each other, it was something unforgettable for them. They started dating off screen. Time passes quickly as Michael and Tracy become special for each other. They both struggled in their career, which made them closer to each other. They secretly build their romance while away from the spotlight. They share joyful moments together, but the people were looking for their office announcement for being in a relationship. They wanted their favorite celebrities to take a decision for them, and Michael didn't disappoint them. Soon, in 1987, during the red carpet of Emmy Awards, Michael and Tracy showed their appearance. Michael received another Emmy Award for his iconic character of Alex in Family Ties. And this time, Tracy was standing beside him as a symbol of support and courage. She was looking at him with a meaningful smile, which was allowing people to understand the depth of their strong bond. As Michael walked down, he grabbed the hand of Tracy, and this proved they were together. Michael was not just a temporary partner. He proposed to Tracy in 1987 for marriage. Tracy happily agreed. Her smile proved her unconditional love for Michael. Once in the interview, Michael revealed that he was 100% sure about the positive response from Tracy. The only thing depressing about their marriage was the place and time for marriage. They kept it a secret. Both didn't want people to invade their privacy, so in a very close gathering, they shared their wedding vows with each other. Just after the seven months of their relationships became public, on July the 16th, they tied the knot in the West Mountain Inn in Arlington, Vermont. The year was 1988, and Michael was 27 years old holding the hand of his wife, who was 28 years old. As they took the vows, they started a splendid journey of joy and love together. After Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan married in 1988, 
they welcomed their first child, Sam, in 1989. Their family grew with the arrival of twins, Aquina and Skylar, in 1995. The youngest daughter of them, Esme, was born in 2001, completing their family. Each child brought unique joy and energy into their lives, shaping their journey as a couple. Michael often spoke about the profound happiness his children brought him, providing strength during challenging times. Together, they navigated the complexities of life, creating a loving home filled with laughter and resilience. Their bond deepened with each milestone, showcasing the power of love and family amidst life's uncertainties. They were raising their family happily. Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan prioritized family time, often engaging in outdoor activities and shared adventures. They fostered open communication, encouraging their children to express themselves freely. With love and laughter as their foundation, they instilled values of empathy and resilience, ensuring their kids grew up grounded and confident. But this was not a fairy tale after all. Michael was unaware that something in the near future was going to destroy his whole career and life too. One day during his shooting of Doc Hollywood, he felt a little twitch in his pinky finger. He considered it an exhaustion symptom and ignored it. But soon, he realized that something suspicious was happening inside his body. Upon examination, he became shocked to know that he was diagnosed with the degenerative neurological disorder, specifically known as Parkinson's disease. Michael couldn't bear the news. He was shocked as the doctor informed him, you are losing your part of the brain that is responsible for producing dopamine. I really feel it and it's genuine, but it's hard fought. And it's hard, it's hard one, I should say. This fear, we can find ways to just give ourselves a break. At that time, he was at the peak of his career. Life was a win-win situation for him. Fear gripped him, threatening to shatter his dreams and public image. Desperate to maintain his vibrant persona, he hid his struggles, forcing a smile even as his body betrayed him. The weight of his secret grew heavier, leading him to seek refuge in alcohol. As he tried to navigate the demands of fame and family, the strain took a toll on his marriage with Tracy. Moments of joy were overshadowed by anxiety and frustration, leaving him feeling isolated. He felt like a performer in a role he could no longer sustain battling a relentless tide of despair. Despite his efforts to appear strong, the cracks began to show, and his internal turmoil seeped into their relationship. Tracy, ever supportive, sensed his pain, but the distance between them widened as he withdrew further into his struggles. Each day became a battle to reconcile his public life with the chaos inside, and he knew he couldn't keep this up forever. Tracy was always there for him. But when she saw Michael get addicted to alcohol and denied taking medical help, she showed her anger towards him. This time Michael realizes that hiding from reality may not change the truth. He must have faced them. Michael J. Fox reached a turning point when he could no longer hide his Parkinson's disease. Tired of the secrecy and the toll it took on his life, he decided to accept his diagnosis. With courage, he quit alcohol, realizing it only deepened his struggles. Determined to confront his reality, he stepped into the spotlight for an interview to share his journey with fans. No longer willing to let the paparazzi dictate his narrative, he openly discussed living with Parkinson's, aiming to inspire others facing similar challenges. He began taking medication to manage his symptoms, finding a new sense of hope in the process. With support from Tracy and his loved ones, he learned that vulnerability could be a strength. Each day became a step towards reclaiming his life, embracing both the struggles and the triumphs. 
Michael's honesty resonated deeply, forging a stronger connection with his fans. By sharing his story, he transformed his pain into a platform for awareness, helping others understand the reality of living with a chronic illness. His journey became a testament to resilience and the power of acceptance. In 2000, he founded an organization to help research about Parkinson's disease, named the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson Research. So Michael J. began his medical treatment with a hopeful spirit, ready to tackle the challenges of Parkinson's disease. From the start, he focused on what he could do to improve his health. With his wife, Tracy, by his side for over three decades, he found strength in her unwavering support. When doctors discovered a non-cancerous tumor on his spine, it felt like another setback. The surgery to remove the tumor left him fragile and in pain. Recovery was difficult, and there were days when he felt overwhelmed. However, Michael refused to let despair take over. He held on to his optimistic approach, believing that he could overcome these obstacles. Tracy's encouragement was crucial during this time. She stood by him through every challenge, reminding him of his strength and resilience. Their family rallied together, filling their home with love and laughter, which made the tough days more bearable. With each passing day, Michael focused on healing and regaining his strength. But his struggles didn't end there. He faced a severe accident soon, in which he broke many of his bones. This accident caused him another hazard to his health. He started to write during this intense period. He wrote that he survived a critical medical condition with the help of Tracy. He called her a blessing. Tracy was also deeply affected by Michael's health. She opened up in an interview about her marriage. She revealed the tough time she had with Michelle while fighting with problems in life. Answering a question, Tracy said that whenever Michael showed unkind behavior, she realized that he was probably going through hard times because the amount of love and affection she received from Michael Fox was splendid. They respect each other's decisions and private space. They have shared this strong bond with each other for almost three decades, and still both are willing to be a sample of joy for their spouses. This is true love. Recently, Tracy and Michael appeared at the National Board of Review Gala in Manhattan, where a documentary about their story grabbed the Best Documentary Award. Their life story is an example for those who are struggling in their life and consider their spouses for the problems coming in. They are still fighting Parkinson, but they are all set to explore the unending adventures of life together. Comment down below with your thoughts about Tracy and Michael Fox. And subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. See you next time. Ron Howard, a legendary director and former actor, recently shared some deeply personal struggles. He even invited me to guest direct The Late Show. Ron Howard has done everything. Historical drama with Frost Nixon, epic fantasy like Willow, action thrillers with Backdraft, even a Disney princess movie. What made this story catch your attention? It's fascinating to think about. While working on a tough scene, something clicked for me. The story wasn't just about excitement, but about real people who lived through those moments. That's where this movie needed to go. Ron Howard is a name everyone knows in the world of cinema and television. But if you think his life is about being a child actor turned famous director, think again. When we were preparing the memorial, we realized that we had a chance to maybe do two things at once. From becoming famous at a young age to making it big behind the camera, Ron Howard's journey is full of excitement, challenges, and hard work. Not only has he proven himself as a great director, but he's also a creative producer, shaping the way we see modern movies. But how did a boy with a friendly smile, who first appeared on The Andy Griffith Show, 
grow into a director behind major hits like A Beautiful Mind and Apollo 13? Let's dive into Ron Howard's incredible life, from his early days on set to his rise to the top of Hollywood. Yeah, I learned a lot about comedy from, from him. I learned a lot about leadership. The early life. Ronald William Howard, known to everyone as Ron Howard, was born on March 1st, 1954, in Duncan, Oklahoma. March 1st, 1954, award-winning actor, producer, and director Ron Howard was born in Duncan, Oklahoma. His family was deeply involved in the arts. His father, Rance Howard, was a passionate actor, and his mother, Jean Spiegel Howard, was a television actress. From a very young age, Ron grew up surrounded by the world of acting, experiencing the magic of film that few other kids had access to. When Ron was still a boy, the family moved to Los Angeles, the center of the movie business. Unlike most children, his early years were filled with auditions, long hours on sets, and bright stage lights. Ron's acting journey started when he was only 18 months old, with a small role in one of his father's films. His charming look quickly caught the eye of filmmakers, and soon he became a well-known child actor. Though he found success early, life wasn't always easy. His role as Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show made him a household name, but behind the scenes, he had to manage both his acting work and school responsibilities. His parents were careful to make sure he wasn't just focused on acting, but also stayed committed to his education. Every day, Ron spent time working on schoolwork in quiet areas of the busy Hollywood studios where he had private tutors to help him stay on track. However, being a famous child star came with its own struggles. At school, Ron's popularity made him the target of teasing. His character's name, Opie, was often turned into nicknames like Dopey or Soapy by other kids. One time, he even faced the embarrassment of wetting his pants in front of his classmates because he was too scared to use the school restroom due to bullying. Yet, with the support of his family, Ron learned how to handle these challenges and eventually found a small group of loyal friends. Yeah. <laughs> he became famous playing Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffin Show. Despite the difficulties, Ron's family provided him with valuable lessons about acting and filmmaking. In the evenings, they would watch movies together and talk about everything from acting techniques to the details of storytelling. These discussions sparked Ron's love not only for acting, but also for what happens behind the camera. It was during these family moments that his dream of becoming a director began to grow. After finishing high school at John Burroughs High School, Ron followed his passion by enrolling in the University of Southern California's School of Cinematic Arts one of the top film schools in the country. However, due to the pressure of his acting career and film projects, Ron had to leave the program before finishing his degree. But the hands-on experience he gained, along with guidance from his parents and the directors he worked with, gave him a strong foundation for the next stage of his career. The Andy Griffith Show. Even though Ron Howard sometimes felt haunted by and didn't like his character Opie, his role as Opie Taylor in The Andy Griffith Show became a key part of American television. The show first aired in 1960 and quickly turned into one of the most loved TV programs of its time. It tells the story of life in the charming town of Mayberry, where Sheriff Andy Taylor, played by Andy Griffith, leads the way. Opie Taylor, Andy's sweet, kind, and curious son brought joy and laughter to audiences, especially through his warm relationship with his father. Set in a small southern town, the show captured the slow, peaceful rhythm of life and had strong human values. Besides Andy and Opie, the series featured a memorable supporting cast. Don Knotts played the clumsy but lovable deputy Barney Fife, while Francis Bavier portrayed Aunt B who acted like a mother to Opie. We went to the rap party. That this was this was it for the Andy Griffith show. Um, and Andy was up there on the microphone talking. Each character added their own special charm, creating a mix of humor and heartwarming moments that viewers loved. With its gentle storytelling, nostalgic feel, and close family dynamics, 
The Andy Griffith Show won the hearts of audiences across generations. It wasn't just about a small-town family. It also showed a simpler way of life where problems could be solved with a nice chat on the porch. Even decades after it first aired, The Andy Griffith Show remains a classic in American television. It still plays on channels like TV Land, MeTV, and Paramount Plus, bringing joy to new viewers. The uncut episodes can be streamed online, allowing audiences to enjoy the sweetness of that time. However, behind the scenes, life on The Andy Griffith Show was not as calm as it seemed. Andy Griffith, known for his wise and easygoing personality as Sheriff Taylor, had a reputation for having a quick temper off camera. His outbursts sometimes caused tension on set. Don Knotts, who played Deputy Barney Fife and was a close friend of Griffith's, didn't always have an easy relationship with him. Knotts won several Emmy Awards for his role, which reportedly made Griffith feel envious, creating some hidden tensions, especially when Knotts left the show to focus on his own career. The personal lives of the actors were filled with secrets and rumors. Griffith, known for his temper, also had a complicated love life. His rumored affairs with co-stars like Annetta Corsaw, who played Helen Crump, created buzz on set and sparked gossip. Don Knotts, while playing a loyal and funny character, faced his own issues, including a troubled marriage and relationships outside of it. Even though the relationships among the main cast weren't always perfect, these challenges created a sense of friendship and realness in their performances. Despite the conflicts and disagreements, teamwork helped the crew overcome personal struggles to make one of the greatest television shows ever. The behind-the-scenes stories, while sometimes surprising, only add more depth to the tale of the show's success. Transition to Directing my earliest memories are of my dad directing Summer Stock, so I was literally, like, literally wandering around. Ron Howard became a famous child star through his roles in The Andy Griffith Show and Happy Days. However, from a young age, he was not only interested in acting, but also in what happened behind the camera. Unlike many actors, Ron didn't just want to be in front of the lens. He was curious about how films were made, the directing process, understand the important role a director plays in creating a film. But Ron didn't stop at just watching. He started making his own short films. These small projects helped him practice his skills and learn more about the craft. As his passion for directing grew, Ron realized that moving from a famous actor to a skilled director wouldn't be simple. He knew that many people would still see him as Opie Taylor or Richie Cunningham, characters connected to the childhoods of many fans. In 1977, at the age of 23, Ron took a brave step by challenging himself with his directorial debut, Grand Theft Auto. This small, low-budget project was a key moment for Ron in establishing himself as a director. Although Grand Theft Auto was not a huge commercial hit, it marked an important first step toward his directing career. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Ron continued to develop his directing skills through several TV projects like Cotton Candy, 1978, and Skyward, 1980. These films allowed him to practice directing techniques, manage a film crew, and work with actors while creating stories from his perspective. However, these early projects were just stepping stones and didn't yet lead to widespread recognition for Ron as a director. His big break came with Night Shift, 1982, a romantic comedy starring Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton. This film gave Ron the chance to fully show off his storytelling skills. Night Shift received positive reactions from both audiences and critics, helping Ron establish himself as a promising young director in Hollywood. Building on the success of Night Shift, his next major project was Splash, 1984. This romantic comedy featured Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah and told the story of a man who falls in love with a mermaid. Splash not only performed well at the box office, but also marked the first time Ron received wide critical praise as a director. The film's clever and emotional storytelling proved that Ron was more than just an actor-turned-director. 
He was a filmmaker who could create powerful stories through images. In 1985, Ron continued to strengthen his reputation with the science fiction film Cocoon, which told the story of a group of elderly people who find a pool of water with rejuvenating powers. The film was a commercial success and even won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for Donna Meche. Cocoon showed Ron's ability to manage larger films with special effects while still delivering touching and emotional stories. In 1989, Ron brought another successful project to life with Parenthood. Hollywood reporter Ron Howard is taking over as director of the film. A family drama about the complexities of relationships and how family members face life's challenges. Parenthood was a commercial hit and received praise from critics for its warm mix of humor and heartfelt moments. This film highlighted Ron's talent for blending humor and emotion to create moving stories that touched audiences. However, the true peak of Ron Howard's directing career came with Apollo 13, 1995. This film marked a significant leap in his growth as a director. Based on the true story of the failed 1970 space mission, Apollo 13 starred Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, and Bill Paxton. The film was a massive commercial success, grossing over $335 million worldwide and receiving nine Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture and Best Director. Apollo 13 established Ron as one of Hollywood's top directors, showcasing his skill in combining technical precision with a deeply emotional narrative. Thanks to Apollo 13, Ron Howard secured his place among the most talented and respected directors in Hollywood, proving he was not just a former child actor, but a master storyteller behind the camera. After making his mark with Apollo 13, Ron Howard entered the peak phase of his directing career. During this time, he solidified his reputation with a series of diverse and critically acclaimed films. One of his most significant achievements was A Beautiful Mind, 2001, a film that told the life story of brilliant mathematician John Nash. The movie also showed Nash's struggles with schizophrenia. Under Ron's skilled direction, the film depicted Nash's internal battle while also highlighting a touching story about love, perseverance, and the unwavering support of his devoted wife. A Beautiful Mind earned four Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Ron Howard. This success firmly established him as one of Hollywood's top directors and is considered a high point in his career. And what happened is, about 20 years ago, when he was starting to become really famous as a director, he and his wife wanted to raise their kids outside Hollywood. Following A Beautiful Mind, Ron didn't slow down. He continued to advance his career with larger and more diverse projects. In 2006, he directed The Da Vinci Code, an adaptation of Dan Brown's famous mystery thriller novel. This project was ambitious, requiring Ron to balance thrilling elements with sensitive religious themes. Despite the controversies surrounding its content, The Da Vinci Code became a global sensation, grossing over $750 million worldwide. This film became one of Ron's most commercially successful works and showcased his talent in handling complex, thought-provoking stories. Beyond commercial hits, Ron also ventured into deeper narratives. In 2008, he released Frost Nixon, a film based on the historic interviews between journalist David Frost and former U.S. President Richard Nixon. Frost Nixon was not just a political drama, it was an intense battle of minds, with both characters driven by their conflicting ambitions. Under Ron's direction, the film captured the psychological depth of the characters, keeping audiences engaged from beginning to end. It received five Academy Award nominations, including Best Director for Ron Howard, proving his ability to handle historical and political narratives with precision. While many directors often focus on a single genre, Ron showed his versatility by continuously challenging himself with different types of films. In 2013, he amazed audiences with Rush, 
a film about the legendary rivalry between Formula One drivers James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Rush was a perfect blend of exciting racing scenes and deeply emotional storytelling, keeping viewers on the edge of their seats. First of all, I was surprised that Rush is happening, like, like you just said. But when I saw it the first time, I was impressed that, that there was no Hollywood changes or, or, or things changed a little bit. The film was not only a critical success, but also demonstrated Ron's ability to turn an unexpected topic, like motorsports, into a compelling human drama. Rush further showcased Ron's diverse directing style, proving he could transform unfamiliar subjects into captivating and heartfelt stories. A Star Wars story. As part of the iconic Star Wars universe, the project was a large-scale production with high technical demands. Ron was brought in to replace the original director midway through filming, a move that placed immense pressure on him to complete the film. Despite these challenges, Ron successfully finished the project, delivering a visually stunning and emotionally engaging movie for Star Wars fans. While Solo did not meet the expected box office performance, Ron's skillful handling of the action, visual effects and storytelling once again demonstrated his versatility. He showed he could tackle a wide range of genres, from political and psychological dramas to sci-fi epics. Ron Howard's impressive career is not only marked by his well-known films, but also by the numerous prestigious awards he has received. Along with his Oscar for A Beautiful Mind, Ron has earned nominations for films like Apollo 13, Frost Nixon, and Rush. His continued exploration of different themes and genres, from human psychology to action-packed stories, showcases his endless creativity and adaptability. These qualities have secured Ron Howard's legacy as one of Hollywood's most talented and versatile directors, making him a master storyteller across the cinematic spectrum. Personal Life Ron Howard is not only known for his amazing career as a talented director, but also for living a peaceful and fulfilling personal life, far from the glitz and chaos often linked to Hollywood. He married Cheryl Alley on June 7, 1975, and together they have built a strong and lasting relationship that has endured for nearly 50 years. Cheryl, who later became a writer, has always been a steadfast companion and supporter throughout Ron's journey, from his days as an actor to becoming one of the most renowned directors in Hollywood. Ron is presently married to Cheryl Alley Howard. She was born in December 1953 and is a graduate from the California State University. She and Ron were close since high school and eventually tied the knot in June 1975. Ron often shares that, from the moment he met Cheryl in high school, he knew she was the one he wanted to be with. They first met as students at John Burroughs High School in California and have supported each other through all of life's ups and downs. Ron believes there is no grand secret to maintaining a long-lasting relationship other than open and honest communication. He and Cheryl have always created an environment where they can freely express themselves, listen to one another, and work through challenges together. One key factor that has strengthened Ron and Cheryl's bond is the unwavering support she has given him throughout his career. When Ron transitioned from acting to directing, Cheryl was by his side, encouraging him and giving him the space he needed to follow his passion. Ron has admitted that much of his success is thanks to Cheryl's patience and support. She has been more than just a life partner. She has been his pillar of strength during the toughest times. Their marriage has been further blessed with four children, Bryce Dallas Howard, Jocelyn Carlisle, Paige Carlisle, and Reed Cross. Among them, Bryce is the most well-known, having followed in her parents' footsteps in the entertainment industry and becoming a successful actress and director. Chris Pratt has had a lot of criticism directed at him, but he's finally getting some praise, and this time it's coming from his co-star Bryce Dallas Howard. Ron has always been protective of his children, especially regarding the pressures of the acting world. He and Cheryl decided not to let their kids enter the industry at a young age, despite their passion for the arts. Ron wanted to ensure they had a normal childhood and were not burdened by comparisons to his iconic roles. 
the Howard family leads a relatively private life away from the spotlight. Ron has always valued family and works hard to maintain a balance between his career and personal life. Along with nurturing their family, Ron and Cheryl have raised their children with strong moral values and a sense of responsibility, always encouraging them to pursue their passions without getting caught up in the allure of fame. Ron and Cheryl are now proud grandparents to five grandchildren and find great joy in watching their family grow. He often shares that family values are what he holds most dear, and it is the stability of his family that has allowed him to remain creative and focused throughout his long career. New Revelations About the Past Looking back on the years spent filming The Andy Griffith Show, Ron Howard often reflects on his childhood, where Desilu Studios became more than just a workplace. It became a significant part of his life. From a young age, Ron witnessed and experienced many unforgettable moments, both sweet and challenging. Growing up on a film set sometimes felt like living in a different world where reality and fiction intertwined. One of Ron's most memorable moments was trying to throw a rock into a lake during the show's iconic opening scene. His small arms weren't strong enough to toss the rock far enough, so a crew member had to step in and throw it for him. The Andy Griffith Show. Starring Andy Griffith, with Ronnie Howard, also starring Don Knotts. These small yet impactful details reveal that even in the world of cinema, things are not always as they appear on screen. While the joyful memories of working on set remain a cherished part of Ron's past, he doesn't shy away from sharing the lesser-known truths. The set of The Andy Griffith Show wasn't always a peaceful place. Crew members often drank alcohol and the work environment was thick with cigarette smoke, making it sometimes too harsh for a young boy. Ron recalled that his eyes would often sting from the smoke, and he was exposed to inappropriate sights for his age, such as crude graffiti on the restroom walls. Growing up in such an environment brought both happiness and significant challenges. As a child actor, Ron had to cope with the pressures of both work and life outside the studio. He was often teased by his peers for his fame, enduring mocking taunts about his character, Opie. However, instead of letting these experiences bring him down, Ron learned to rise above them. The lessons he absorbed during his early years helped him develop resilience and gave him a deeper understanding of the tough realities of the entertainment industry. As Ron grew older and continued his career, those childhood experiences became the foundation that shaped him into the talented director he is today. He frequently credits his time observing directors on set as the inspiration that fueled his passion for working behind the camera. The challenges and joys of his past gave him unique insight into storytelling, a gift that became evident in the successful films he directed later in life. Ron's reflections on his journey have made him appreciate the importance of perseverance and passion. From a beloved child actor to an acclaimed director, his story is a testament to growth, overcoming obstacles, and the never-ending pursuit of knowledge. Although time has passed, the memories of The Andy Griffith Show remain with him as a cherished and irreplaceable part of his life and career. Current Life At 70, Ron Howard continues to nurture his passion for filmmaking. Although he no longer sits at the pinnacle of his career as he once did, he now leads a fulfilling life surrounded by his family, especially his wife, Cheryl Alley, who has been his steadfast companion for nearly half a century. Together, they have built a happy family with four children, including Bryce Dallas Howard, who has followed in her father's footsteps, making her mark as both an actress and a director. Ron and Cheryl also share a deep bond with their grandchildren, dedicating much of their time to enjoying family life. Nevertheless, Ron hasn't fully stepped away from cinema. In 2024, he is involved in several major projects, most notably Eden, a survival horror film he has been developing for over a decade. This film is set to be released soon and revolves around a mysterious event in the Galapagos Islands, captivating audiences with an intriguing story 
and a star-studded cast, including Jude Law and Ana de Armas. This project is deeply personal for Ron, affirming that his creative spark still burns brightly after decades in the film industry. In addition to Eden, Ron Howard is delving into the life of Jim Henson, the creator of The Muppets, with the documentary Jim Henson Idea Man, released on Disney Plus in 2024. So no doubt you are familiar with the name Jim Henson. Now, the story of the man behind many of our favorite movies and iconic characters is finally being told. Lindsay Davis spoke to award-winning director Ron Howard about how his new documentary dives into the mind of one of the world's most renowned creators. This project is one that Ron is particularly proud of. Not only does it recount the story of a once-in-a-generation talent like Henson, but it also reveals how Henson has been a significant source of inspiration in Ron's own creative journey. Currently, Ron maintains his dedication to his work while focusing more on his family and inspirational projects. He often reflects on his life and career, expressing gratitude for the successes he has achieved, from his early days as a child actor to his status as a renowned director. Ron Howard has undergone an extraordinary journey, evolving from a beloved child actor on The Andy Griffith Show to becoming one of Hollywood's most renowned directors. The years spent on set nurtured a passion for storytelling, not only in front of the camera, but also behind it. From iconic films like Apollo 13 and A Beautiful Mind, to his latest projects like Eden, Ron has proven that perseverance, continuous learning, and an unwavering dedication to his craft are the keys to success. Ron's journey is a testament to the power of dreaming big and working hard to achieve those dreams. His achievements as a director have firmly established him as one of the greatest talents in the world of cinema. Without a doubt, Ron Howard's career will continue to shine and inspire generations to come. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed hearing about Ron Howard's incredible life story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content. Leave a comment and share your thoughts on his journey from child actor to legendary director. See you in the next video.